official must be clear and amount to legal advice. Whilst the advice given by Mr. Jones appeared to be brief and perhaps concise, the message was made very clear. Had Mr. Jones proceeded to recite the law relating to casual trading, mentioning various subsections of the act or bylaws, the message may well have been lost in, in what a layman would consider legal jargon. We'll continue by addressing the question of Mr. Jones. Even Thank you. Ms. Kyo, I'm interested uh, to hear you say um, in the later Canadian case, you say uh, um, that that supports you on the basis that uh, uh, that case said no specific advice was given or sought. But Ms. Brown did seek advice from your part. this particular case. Judge, it is a long recognised principle that, re that ignorance of the law is no mistake, for if it was, the law would lose its effect as it could be pretended. However, the now recognised defence of officially induced error provides an exception to the rule where a defendant can satisfy the court that they were expressly misled by the authority and that they can satisfy stringent requirements, which are most clearly set out in this jurisdiction. That relying on professional legal case. advice can never act as a defence to having a trial restrained. It would lead to severe inequities if an appellant could not escape criminal liability after seeking legal advice before acting and successfully showing that they had honestly relied on the advice which they were given. It is recognised that the advice must be sought in a timely manner, which is in fact what Ms Brown did. Circumstances ...where it was hardly it was contemplated that it would be solely relied upon at face value without seeking further advice on the matter. In summary, the respondent makes the following points. The plea of officially induced error cannot be relied upon in the present circumstances where the stringent test has not been reasonably satisfied that the defendant...